Okay, so we're going to continue with the second videos of the uh, group 2 in the inorganic chemistry where we're going to continue with thermal stability of group 2 nitrates and carbonate. So let's start off uh, with the introductions where we are going to generally say that uh, group 2 carbonates and nitrates when heated uh, will decompose uh, will decompose to form different products. So these are the products formed when group 2 nitrates are heated strongly. So it decompose to become group 2 metal oxide, oxygen and also nitrogen dioxide. So what we will observe in here is you form a brown gas of nitrogen dioxide in here. Whereas a uh, group 2 metal carbonate when heated strongly will dissociate to become metal oxide and also carbon dioxide. So you can use this uh, lime water to test the presence of the carbon dioxide. Yeah? Okay, so now let's start off first with the decompositions of the group 2 carbonate and how do we explain them. Now as you can see from here, as going down to group 2 carbonate, stability of group 2 carbonate increases when going down to group 2. So this can be explained by the following phenomenon where when going down to group 2, cationic radius of group 2 increase. That means you increase from barium ion to magnesium ion to calcium ion to strontium ion to barium ion. As a result, the charge density of the cation decreases when going down to the group. So let's make use of beryllium as example to continue our discussions. So we know that beryllium has a small size and high charge, therefore it will have a high charge density. So as a result, beryllium 2 plus has a high polarizing power and this allows the beryllium ion to polarize a large carbonate ion. So what happened in here after the polarized uh, the big carbonate ion is polarized is it is able to attract the oxygen in the carbonate closer to the beryllium, weakening the CO in the bond therefore decompose. Furthermore, uh, we know that beryllium oxide is more stable than the beryllium carbonate which makes the reactant reaction more easily to occur under low temperature. So these are the points that we have to explain whenever we are explaining about group 2 thermal stability when going down to group 2 carbonate. Actually, similar explanation can be used to explain group 2 nitrates. So for group 2 nitrates, you can see that the points are also similar. So when going down to group 2 nitrate, stability of group 2 nitrate increases when going down to the group. According to the equation, 2MnO32 gives 2MO plus O2 plus 4NO2. So same in the phenomenon can be used to explain where we start off with the cationic radius of group 2 where they increase from beryllium until barium. So therefore, the charge density of the cation decreases. So let's make use beryllium as example where the small size and high charge of beryllium has high charge density. As a result, beryllium 2 plus has high polarizing power. So this allows beryllium to polarize the large nitrate ion and cause the oxygen in nitrate ions to attract closer to barium ion. And at this moment, this will render or weakening the NO bonds in the nitrate, hence decompose. Furthermore, the beryllium oxide form is more stable than the barium nitrate forms which makes the reaction occur more easily at the low temperature. So as you can see, no matter we are discussing about nitrates or carbonate, we still use the same points and same traits to explain their thermal stability. Next, we are going to study about anomalous behavior of beryllium. So now we can see from that the due to the small cationic size with high charge, okay, so it will give high charge density towards beryllium and this allows beryllium for being largely covalent and therefore a strong Lewis acid. So the coordination number most commonly observed for this small atom is 4 and the local geometry is tetrahedral. So you need to understand why beryllium can only have coordination number equals to 4 because uh, Unlike any other uh, elements inside group 2, uh, beryllium does not have empty d orbitals to allow them to go through. So what are the consequences of all these properties? So a significant covalent contribution to beryllium halide. So we know that beryllium chloride, bromide and iodide, all of them are covalent. And even the hydride is also a covalent. So it also gives the greater tendency to form complexes inside beryllium. Another most important thing about the small, uh, the high charge density of the beryllium is the hydrolysis of beryllium salt in water. 
to give a very uh, to give a BH to O3 or H plus in acidic and cause the solution to become acidic. So later I'm going to show you on how to write the equations. Abarium is also more well known as one of the very stable organic metallic compound, organometallic compound, where you can use to re re uh, create a uh, beryllium, methyl beryllium, ethyl beryllium, or uh, third butyl beryllium. So all of them can be react, which uh, most of the group two cannot. Another important general feature of beryllium is strongly diag strong diagonal relationship with aluminium. So both barium and aluminium, uh, so what are the common properties between aluminium and barium? Let's have a look together. So both barium and aluminium covalent hydride and halide are covalent compound, okay? Whereas the rest of the group two are predominantly ionic. So both barium and aluminium exist as dimer, can exist as dimer. So this is the dimer of barium chloride, and this is the dimer of aluminium chloride. So both of them making use of the chlorine to form a dative bond to another atom and hence stabilize them. The other common properties between barium and aluminium is the oxide. So both of the oxide are amphoteric, whereas the oxide of the rest of the group 2 are basic. In the presence of the hydroxide ions, okay, barium and aluminium can form BeOH4 and AlOH4 respectively. However, no equivalent chemistry is observed for other group 2 compounds. And both elements form structure based on link tetrahedral. So barium forms a structural build for barium oxide O4N minus, whereas aluminium forms O4N minus 2. So these are the summarized tables of uh, common uh, the anomalous relationship between barium and aluminium and what is the difference between calcium, uh, magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. So uh, both barium and aluminium. Uh, has high charge density, so therefore mainly covalent, while the rest of the group 2 are mainly uh, ionic. All of the group 2 compound cannot react with alkali, but beryllium can react with alkali, so same goes with aluminium. All group 2 oxide are basic, but both barium oxide and aluminium oxide are amphoteric, so according to the equations that is written on the screen right now, so these are the balance equations for the reactions to take place. Now, so not only that uh, magnesium oxides are basic for group 2 oxide, so group 2 hydroxide are also basic, but for barium hydroxide and aluminum hydroxide, they are also amphoteric according to the equations that has been shown to you. Both barium and oxide and aluminum oxide are insoluble in water due to the protective oxide layer. However, solubility in water for the group 2 oxide increase and the reactivity of with air also increase when going down the group 2. And for salt, for example, barium chloride and aluminum chloride, both of them are covalent compound. So they exist in a covalent molecule and can, can hydrolyze readily in water. So an aluminum uh, a hexa aqua aluminum ions hydrolyzed in water, you form AlOH H2O5 uh, 2+, plus, and what acidic solution is formed here. So same goes with the beryllium uh, uh, tetra aqua beryllium ion, when uh, hydrolyzed in water, you form BOH H2O3+, plus, okay, and also produce acidic solutions in here. Whereas all of the group 2 chlorides are ionic and only magnesium chloride can slightly hydrolyze in water according to the following equations given to you in here. So there I have for you the anomalous behavior between barrier oxide and aluminum oxide. So last but not least, let's have a look at the applications of group 2 compounds. So barium is unreactive with air, so uh, it is uh, due to its uh, oxide layer. So, uh, and it is a light metal, so it is used to make uh, aircraft and also alloy, okay? And it also has high transparent to X-ray due to low atomic number, therefore it's suitable to be used as an X-ray tube. But it is also used as a moderator for nuclear reactions, so uh, because uh, it slows down the fast moving neutron through in elastic collision because uh, barium is a very weak absorber of neutron and the metal has high melting point. So that is all for the this one. Huh? As for magnesium, uh, most of them are usually made for light, lightweight elements, for example making the body of aircraft, especially when alloyed with aluminium. 
So some of the magnesium are based in that magnesium firm, uh, for, uh, form an intense white flame. So that A4 is used in fireworks and also flare. A uh, various application of magnesium include milk of magnesium, which is uh, a commodity common remedy for indigestion, okay, and also uh, milk for magnesium to treat constipations. Okay, and magnesium hydroxide magnesium oxide is also used as refractory lining for the furnace. So uh, because magnesium oxide has a very high uh, melting point and uh, high thermal conductivity but low electrical conductivity, yeah. And organomagnesium compounds are widely used uh, in grid nut, as a grid nut reagents. So calcium, so calcium uh, in here, it is one of the major components to make cement and mortar, which is used to attach brick. Uh, calcium, hydrogen, uh, calcium sulfate dihydrate is also used in uh, plasterboard, okay, to separate the building. So the plasterboard in here also made of calcium sulfate, and also in the plaster of Paris which is used to fix the broken bones. So uh, calcium, okay. And then strontium does not have much use. It is used in the television tube, but nowadays we don't really have use much more of this television tube, so strontium does not have much application. And finally for barium, uh, one of the most uh, significant is the uh, use in the x-ray treatment. So they uh, we call it as a barium meal. So, um, patients with uh, intestine problem especially so they will be given this uh, barrier meal so after given with barrier meal so they will be undergoes x-ray and place that has a problem uh, will be observed as a white spot inside the x-ray okay okay so with this we finish chapter chapter four of the group two of inorganic chemistry so we'll continue on our lesson on next week thank you